God has something concerning us and our well-being, this matter of salvation. And the gospel of Christ is the empowering element in any of us who have been saved. It is the power of God and the salvation to who? To every one who believeth. Does that remind you of that verse in Ephesians 1.19? It says in verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? Those have got to be related to us. The key to the power of God and to experiencing his best is belief. You cannot, you cannot enjoy much of God at all unless you are a believer in him, a son or daughter by belief in his sacrifice for you. You know what? I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian too. What is a Christian? Can I say it again? I preach this here so often. You and I have to deal with Jesus. The Bible says God is a spirit. The Bible says there is Father, Son, and the Spirit. And strangely, we live in a world today that wants to have a generalized knowledge or acceptance of some concept called God, but doesn't want to bow to what the Bible says about Jesus. I spoke about my boy, I often do. You cannot be Pastor Rose's friend and hate his son, Jesse. And can we love God or have some concept of God and have no faith and no desire for his son? I think the answer is no. Hence, this good news about the Son. Why, if it can save me, it must. It's the answer. It is the hope. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of that. That's what's changed my life. It is what does change our lives. Have you trusted Jesus as your own? It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. You say, I was always the last one picked to play games when I was a kid. My sister was always treated better than me back home. Mom and Dad played favorites. Hey, listen. Plan of salvation is as easily offered to you this morning as it has been offered to anyone. There's a God who loves you and has given us all that you might be saved. Will you slap his hand away and gift he offers to you? This good news is hope and salvation to every one that believes it. So believe and receive and accept this yourself. I again sort of like the vision of John Wesley from 200 years ago and pleading with his listeners and as he said, invited them to Christ, he said, Come, and if you believe as I believe regarding him, take my hand. Take my hand. And many people didn't take his hand. Came back years later and took his hand and said, You know, John, I do. And they took his hand happily as a signal of the believing that took place in their heart. They're having received the Lord. I'm not ashamed, says Paul, by this good news is the power of God. The power of God. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 23, here again is Paul. Some very carnal people who were not deep spiritual types, and we're not that way either, our average Joe, most of them. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 23. But this is what he says. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 23, Paul said, We preach Christ crucified. We preach uncomfortable message, you think? Repulsive message, you think? Why, we still insist, we preach the gospel of Christ. He crucified under the Jews, whoa, under a Jewish person. Why, this is all a stumbling block, something tripped over and always tripped over in their case, says Paul, 1 Corinthians 1.23. But then also unto the Gentiles, as everybody else, foolish.
foolishness to them. They won't receive them because it's foolishness. To them it's acceptably foolish. The verse 24, Paul says, But unto them who are called, why unto them? Why unto them? I mean, you and I, says Paul, you Corinthians, you and I, unto us. Why? Unto us. We are called, verse 24, the power of Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So important is the power and the powerful work of God. You see, we take the first chapters of a number of books. Let's try 1 Thessalonians. And this time, chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians 1, and verse 5, again, it's Paul, and he writes, Our gospel came not unto you in word, but also in power. And in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. You saw us, but you sensed, didn't you? That there was authority, there was power here. And there was indeed, says Paul, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the definition of a Christian? Many have been offered one of the most concise is a possessor of the Holy Spirit, a possessor of the Holy Ghost. Remember the Savior said, I'm going back to heaven, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send, he said, says, another comforter who will be with you always. And when you and I have trusted in Jesus Christ as our only hope, God immediately sends one into us in a special way who will never leave us, who is with us to every moment, even now, the Holy Spirit, John 14. And you and I have the privilege and the joy of experiencing Him. Now Paul says, when I came to you of Thessalonica, I was with you barely three weeks. And I got chased by the town. You got me out safely. I'm writing back. I want you to know it wasn't just me. It wasn't just my troop. It was God that was involved in all of that. God, the Holy Spirit. And the power, he says, the power of God. And you know what? That is what's missing. I think about this on occasion about fellow pastors. New York City has some very gifted men, great preachers, wonderful pastor spirits. We have probably, it's debatable, enough churches, largely. You know what we're missing? missing the power of the Holy Spirit. We've got a lot of good things going for us, but we're not much on prayer. I think I can, and they're not authorized me, but I think I can confess for my pastoral friends. We spend a lot less time in prayer than we want. We do a good job with your church mail. We do a good job with snow shoveling during the winter. We do a really fantastic job transporting you sometimes around the city. Getting you to church, getting you home. But we're not much for prayer. We're not much for what is truly, I believe, what the vocation, the call of pastor should be primarily about. We do a lot of the things of husk nature, but of the kernel, of the, of the real heart of the fruit. And we are lacking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, 1 Thessalonians 1. Our gospel had something supernatural about it. Not in word only. People of education could have done as well. People who are from loose, who are both, and have great vocabulary and personality power. But we came with perhaps, oh yeah, maybe with that. Don't forget that Paul was hugely gifted and hugely educated and prepared for what he did do. But he says, doesn't he, that he came in the power of the Holy Spirit. Something was largely missing today. That is the Holy Spirit. A Christian is one who has the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit enters in immediately upon our trust in Christ as our Savior and our Lord. But we say no often to the Holy Spirit. We ignore the Holy Spirit. We downplay, we quench sometimes the Holy Spirit. 
And that person of God within us has not the sake of the times that we need to have, the direction we need to have. Paul says, you can know this about our coming among you. We came with the Spirit's power and by the Spirit. That kind of power is dismissive. We struggle for it, seems. One more in the first chapter. Let's try Philippians 1. This is a verse you should have colored in on your Bible. It is a verse to turn to often. Philippians 1, verse 6. And again, this is Paul writing to the people, a letter of joy in many ways, but verse 6, he wants to be assured of. Philippians 1, verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What is that day of Jesus Christ? Probably that refers to his coming back for us. That's a promise of Scripture. But until that day, Paul says you can have confidence. You may be like Pastor Rose, like many others in our room, a little tentative, a little, not a great, proud, boasting, wide, distracted, step kind of person. You, you, you're careful, and, and you're not full of great swagger, New York City swagger and boastfulness. You're, 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 you need, you need a few more like you might say, you know, instead of a little bit uh, more honest. But you're not, you're not a great mover or accomplisher. You look your name up on the internet or Google your name and nobody's listed under your name in Google. We're not much. And the prospects are pretty dim, really, apart from God. But then when he is not a part, and he is part, amen? But he is part, why well, then we can have confidence. We can have confidence. And in Philippians 1, verse 6, Paul says that there's anything I can be confident about, that we can be confident about. We can be confident of this very thing. That he, that is God, who has begun a good work in you, will perform it. you got to get out there and perform. You won the trip to China. You're, you've taken somebody's place. you got to get out there. You're nervous. Maybe you're even hurt. Maybe you're hurt in practice. you got to get out there and perform for your country, for yourself. Finish. You know what? God's a finisher. I was talking with some of the pastors the other day. He told me how he had seven or eight books all on their way at once. And for years I've been able to say it's probably worse. I bet you I have about 40 books all started at the same time. And once in a while I'll finish one. But at the rate I'm going, I'm still adding more books that I'm reading than at the rate I'm finishing any of them. And it's a frustration, it's just my character. But in that area, I'm not good at finishing. Finishing is a good thing. Let me tell you, finishing is a good thing. Maybe you, or you're married to someone like this, who will take out a project and do something, but never finish it. That can be our characters. But you know what? God finishes. God finishes strong. God finishes completely. God finishes dependently. And as you expect God to be, God does. He executes. He is active. And he accomplishes. Verse 6. Paul says, Be confident of this very thing. That he, God, who has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the conclusion, until the day of the 